Today we are going to Siona Island in the Dominican Republic, so buckle in, this is going to be a good one. Named Siona by Christopher Columbus when he landed on these beaches in 1494. Siona Islands today is a protected nature reserve consisting of 42 square miles in the Dominican Republic. It's also been known for the filming locations from Pirates of the Caribbean and Blue Lagoon. It's home to 539 species of endemic flora and over 300 species of bird and marine life. We start our day off in our hotel where we get picked up around 8 o'clock in the morning. We get on a bus filled with cobwebs and there's no one else on it, which is kind of good and we're thinking maybe that it'll be a quiet tour. We drive for a bit and then realise we're quite wrong with it being a quiet tour as we arrive at another hotel and pick up a lot more guests. Then we drive a bit further and change buses again and then again and then we end up on the side of a motorway and then board this big coach. Again, throughout all of this, nobody's telling us nothing. Nobody tells me nothing. So once we're on the coach, we drive again for another about 50 minutes until we pull off into this jungle area where there's a store, and clearly this store is just for tourists, as it is in the middle of, well, nowhere. I didn't get off the bus because I couldn't really be bothered, um, but we weren't there too long, about 20 minutes, and then we were back on the road. After another 50 minutes of driving, we then pull into what looks like to be the forward operating base for Siona Island. Again, we get off the bus and we don't know what we're doing, nobody speaks to us or tells us anything and we're just simply following the person in front of us until we get to sort of a, a clearing where we're accosted by people trying to sell us hats and take our pictures for unknown reasons and just generally baking in the sun for an undetermined period of time. And about 20 minutes passes during this period of time and we think that it's best to just find someone in the group. So this guy here that's all with the hive uh, backpack on on top, we thought, right, he's with our group so let's just follow him and hopefully we won't get lost. So we follow the masses down to the beach, and oh boy. Like a reverse scene out of Saving Private Ryan. And I have no idea how we got on the right boat. Like, no idea at all, it's chaos. I thought the evacuation of Afghan airport was hard to watch on Sky News. I didn't think I would be recreating it on holiday. And for that one point paying to recreate it. Of course we followed the flow but still had no idea what we're doing or where we're going 
um, and we eventually did make it onto the correct boat, but it was just highly stressful and just something that with a bit of communication could have been avoided. After we had boarded the boat, fingers crossed hopefully it was ours, we did receive a briefing from what we now know to be our tour guide and we got a wristband to identify our group. When I say wristband, it's just a little bit of red string. However, this is no longer needed now. I mean, it would have been very useful in the 15 minutes prior, but hey ho, we're on the water and we're going somewhere, hopefully soon, on our island. The journey to the natural pool was quite long considering we did have twin inbound engines. The music was insanely too loud, but you can't really argue with the scenery. We then had some company from the seagulls which appeared to have a relationship with our boat photographer because he was throwing up soda crackers and they were catching them in their beaks and then dropping them because I don't think they really like soda crackers. But it was quite interesting to watch and I got a few good shots of it. It was advertised as a natural pool, but in reality, it's just a shallow sandbank. And for the location and depth, the visibility is surprisingly terrible. Just a quick tip, you'll need to watch out for the anchors on the ground, there are many boats mod there and the anchors are just on the sandbank and they can give nasty injuries if you trip or stump your toes on them. And another con is the booming music, from either a broken subwoofer or an about to be broken subwoofer. Again I found this a bit unnecessary and a bit more off putting, you know. You know, play it on the boat, but when you're in the nice area which is peaceful, don't play booming reggaeton at 50 plus decibels. The drinks you are offered on the boat are very limited, well specifically to coke, rum or water, so feel free to bring a cooler bag or any snacks you want to have via pickup up to about 1 o'clock. The cups provided are extremely small, like 200 milliliters. I feel a benefit if they had larger ones, but then people wouldn't be running to the boat for refills all the time. So um, bring your own cup, like one of these big vented, or what do they call them, insulated coolers might be useful.
we arrived at Siona Island at lunchtime, or around lunchtime. And we had a Pirates of the Caribbean style landing, as we have to jump out into a few feet of water and then make our way to the shore, which was quite fun. We are one of the first tolls to arrive on the island so it's pretty empty. We're told to grab a pitch anywhere we want to on the beach and then meet at this gazebo style area for a briefing from our tour guide. You have a lot of freedom when you're on the islands. We had about two hours to do as we wished. I chose to do a bit of b-roll filming and jump into the sea to test out some new GoPro attachments I had, but I was slightly disappointed with the results, but hey ho. So, what's to drink on the island, just like the speedboat? Yes. Rum, cola, or water. Or a combination of the three. Again, they could benefit from larger cups and a diet soda option, but there's nothing stopping you bringing that when you want to do the tour. There's plenty of sellers on the beach from those pina colada pineapples, coco loco sellers, that's a coconut with some rum and coconut water in it. But in fairness, the coconuts and the pina coladas weren't that expensive, about $8. In Mexico, you'll find them like 10 and 15 plus. The food was served at the gazebo that we first had our briefing. The food was kind of basic, but filling, and I think I had too much spaghetti hoop pasta. But there is a lot of grilled meat options if you want rice, and they had salad and bread roll.
So we now make our way off Sierra Island and to a catamaran, or to a speedboat to then take us to a catamaran. As we're trying to board the speedboat, a freak wave splashes up and hits my Sony, which renders it out of action. The loss of the DSLR on day 3 of the holiday is pretty crappy, but I'm pretty sure I can fix it when I get back home. We board the catamaran from the speedboat and it only takes about two minutes to manoeuvre around to the catamaran. Everyone seemed to have a good time and the group was dancing and listening to Latin and reggaeton music as we make our way back to the staging post of Siona Island. The drinks are, well you guessed it, rum, cola or water, hooray! Just something to note, they do come round and try and put this Dominican Republic bandana on the top of your head and then come round when you're about to leave the boat and try and charge you $10 for it. So that is something to take note of. Alongside when they try and sell you the pictures, I overheard a few different conversations and the sales price ranges from $8 to $15 per photograph, which is a bit... Expensive, I think. As the 12 hour day ended it wasn't too much of a daunting thought to head back to the resort. So we head back up to the buses which in my opinion are quite strategically parked and I noticed this cyclist refreshment cooler vehicle if you can call it at the front of the bus so I don't miss the opportunity and I nip out and get beer. And the guy doesn't seem to have changed so he just gives me a chocolate ice cream. I'm like eh, why not? Free chocolate ice cream. Well, not free, but you get my gist. So remember when I talked about us getting our photos taken just as we got off the bus when we first arrived? This is why. They printed out a sticker of your face and put it on this unknown drink beverage. 
which isn't even alcohol, as it turns out, because he was explaining you have to put alcohol in it and leave it for like a week, and then it'll taste, I don't know, like alcohol left for a week. But glad we didn't do that, because we weren't peer pressured into buying anything. The ride home did seem a lot quicker, that's probably because I had a beer and I'd been drinking rum all day. Um, the fact that we didn't stop off at random shops in the jungle that no one really wanted to. About an hour and a half after we left the staging area, we pulled into this gas station to my delight as I was presently about to piss myself. And there wasn't a toilet on the coach, before you ask. And then when I got back to the coach, I was informed that we were changing coaches. Well, from our coach to a bus. So we decamp and held, head, <laughs> decamp and head to the small minibus that's just in front of our coach. And this was a scene out of Benidorm, like the party bus from hell. Guests have seized control of the tour operator's microphone and they've requisitioned it to sing karaoke. Oh yes. And bottles of rum and tequila are being passed from row to row. However, we did end up speaking to a nice Colombian chap who was testing out his English with us and all in all they were jolly but maybe a bit just irritatingly jolly. So in summary, let's go through the pros, the cons and the tips for the day. So the pros, it is a jam-packed day, you're moving all the time and there's lots to do. And there's lots of freedom, you can pretty much do what you want and there's a lot of time to do that. And it is a nice beach, I'll give it that. And the cons, it is a long travel time, it is very unorganised, there's very limited drink options, and there's really loud music, which... Loud music, when it's amplified correctly, is okay, but this was that... <laughs> that sort of music. So the tips is bring your own mixer, definitely. Uh, bring your own cup, like a big cooler cup and bring a dry bag so you don't break any of your cameras. Okay, see you on the next one. A tip for some viewers, if you're thinking of coming to the Dominican Republic to just do this excursion and the other excursions we've done, um, don't. There's far better visually pleasing areas in the Caribbean that are a lot cheaper to get to. For example, El Cielo, which is in Cozumel in Mexico, takes less time to get to from England straight to <laughs> El Cielo in Mexico than it does from Punta Cana to this island right here. And El Cielo is nicer, less of the music, the commercialization, and it's the water's a lot cleaner and there's a lot more marine life. Uh, if I find a video, I'll whack that in. But yeah, as a go-to point, as a top selling point, it's not that great here, to be fair.